Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, April 3rd, 2014. Now, by now, I'm sure you've heard about the unfortunate shooting at Fort Hood. Four people killed, 16 wounded at this point. We had reporters from InfoWars go up there, Kit Daniels and Jakari Jackson, and they asked the questions that the mainstream media has been avoiding. Specifically, were they, was the shooter on SSRI drugs? That has been the common link in all of these mass shootings. It's not PTSD, as the mainstream media is making this out, as they're trying to demonize the soldiers with this, but it is SSRI drugs. Now, Kit Daniels also asked the general who was fielding questions about the response time. The general said they were very happy with the response time. It took 10 to 15 minutes to get there. Well, that's about two people a minute getting shot because the soldiers are not allowed to carry weapons. But that doesn't keep people like Piers Morgan from demonizing guns and demonizing that being carried. In a report from Paul Joseph Watson, Fort Hood shooting, is it time to disarm the entire U.S. military? And the Twitter verse goes to war with Piers Morgan's ridiculous assertions. Piers Morgan says, if only there'd been a good guy with a gun. And a person replied, such crap. And then Piers Morgan says the soldier shooter was a good guy until he turned bad with a gun. To which Katie Pavlich said, should we stop giving soldiers guns? Oh, wait, already did that. Result, mass shootings and gun-free defenseless military bases. Exactly. Take a look at these pictures from the Daily Mail. We've got the shooter here holding looks like a 50 caliber gun. And underneath the caption says that he was on Ambien. And then we see even a picture of him with a rocket launcher. And by the way, he was not in battle. It doesn't appear that PTSD was the problem. But Piers Morgan's whole line is essentially the same as we see at the airports, where the TSA hassles airline pilots who are flying the planes and taking away nail clippers from them. That's what they're doing in the military bases. If we can't trust these guys with weapons, why are they in the military in the first place? And of course, the police and the military police that are there at the base they're in the same boat. Most of the police are former military themselves. But it really is coming down to things like the equalizer. It was one woman who stopped the shooter, one woman with a gun. That is the thing that equalizes them. But as I was driving to work this morning, I heard local radio talking about this because this is not only in this area, it's not just a national story, but it's also a story with a lot of local concern. The military's base is only a couple hours away from here. I heard talk radio hosts saying, that military base is filled with crazy people. To which the other host, who's supposedly more conservative, said, well, I wouldn't use that term. It's not politically correct to say that. We need to come up with something. He didn't disagree that the problem was the soldiers. The problem is not the soldiers. Again, the problem is SSRI drugs and a situation where only a single shooter in a gun-free zone has a free hand to do whatever they wish. But we need to remember, as many people, many conservatives are blaming PTSD and mental illness and pushing gun control on those people, we need to understand how that has traditionally been misused and how our veterans have been abused in the past. Take a look at this series from December. This was something that was reported on in detail by the Wall Street Journal, PBS and others picked up on it. It hit across the left-right political spectrum. The forgotten lobotomies of World War II vets Turns out that lobotomies were reportedly used in VA hospitals as finer, final answers for uh, if other treatments didn't work in World War II. First, they would try things like alternating high-pressure blasts of cold and hot water, then insulin-induced comas, then electric shock therapy. If those were deemed ineffective, they used lobotomies on more than 2,000 soldiers, many of them who had suffered horrifically in World War II in Japanese prisoner of war camps. And because of that suffering, what they did was they doubled down on it when these soldiers came back, leaving them in a state that they described as overgrown children, unable to care for themselves. Seizures, amnesia, motor function loss, even death were common outcomes. This is the way we have treated our veterans in the past. And if you think it's going to be any better, take a look at this new brain initiative that is coming from DARPA and other Components in the U.S. government. Now, President Obama has doubled the funding for the BRAIN Initiative, and the BRAIN Initiative is actually an acronym. 
brain research through advancing innovative neurotechnologies. And this is being focused by DARPA, and they're saying that they're going to help people with PTSD. That's one of the ways that they are well, selling this is to, as a cure for PTSD, that they're going to be able to selectively remove memories. Do we really want the government that has been invading our homes, invading our privacy, invading our emails, our metadata, do we really want them to now be able to invade our minds? The new technologies are much more subtle, much more high tech than the old style lobotomies or electric shock. But it is the same sort of thing that has always traditionally been used against dissonance. In the Soviet Union, if the government didn't like you, they declared you insane and took you away. That is what's coming if we start to support gun control in the name of looking out for all those crazy people on military bases. No, people are not disqualified from living in our society just because they served in the military and were subject to extremely abusive treatment as a result of that. Now there's also, of course, the gun side of this. And we see this illustrated here again in San Antonio. It wasn't that long ago that Open Carry Texas had a large rally in San Antonio because people were being harassed for legally, openly carrying guns, protected under state law, even protected under the Second Amendment, we could argue. And so InfoWars covered that, and we saw that when there were thousands of gun owners there, the police were very deferential, very respectful. There was no trouble. As soon as it dwindled down to just a few people, they started getting started harassing people again. And now we see this in San Antonio over the weekend. We see a Texas man who is testing the open carry law. Folks, he's doing civil rights work. This is the way Alex has described it. He's exactly right. This is the modern civil rights movement. He's told he's free to go. Then he's tasered and arrested. This is a very long video, but what happens is a 19-year-old who is carrying a loaded rifle strapped to his back was, had a very long discussion with an officer. He was told by the officer, you're not under arrest. You're free to go. You're just going to happen to walk home, and I'm going to happen to make sure you get home safely. And as soon as you get home safely, you'll never see us again. Then another police officer shows up. This police officer asks him if the gun is loaded, and he says, yes. He says, hand it over. He says, not unless I'm legally under arrest, at which point the guy just tasers him. And as the report says, the taser malfunctioned and did not stop after five seconds. I had to manually shut it off, said the officer. There you go, he's just using it as compliance punishment. We've got a conflict between the local city ordinance and the state ordinance, which I would argue that the city ordinance and even the open carry laws that are in place against pistols in Texas are in conflict with the Second Amendment. But, you know, if it's in conflict and you don't lawfully arrest somebody, you can still taser them just for compliance. Now also, in more military news, we see there's more evidence of U.S. funding al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria. You know, last week we saw that the Turkish government was plotting to use al-Qaeda to start false flags. And this story from Kurt Nemo, we see the Washington, Repo Washington Post reporting that back in December, there was an effort to thwart the fear of the public that the U.S. would be supporting radical jihadists. The Secretary of State made a statement that he was certain that only 25% of the rebels were jihadists, <laughs> and Kurt Nemo points out. In other words, in an effort to subvert a sovereign nation and decide who will rule over it and who will cooperate with the financial elite, the U.S. government is only partially collaborating with declared enemies, al-Qaeda. That is, we are assured that that's better than fully cooperating with them. Now, in economic news, we see that the IRS chief has said that Obamacare enforcement it's like snow removal. There you go. He says, even as the IRS faces budgetary pressures, the health law will be a priority just as snow removal is for a city. I guess it's a much higher priority than providing emails that show the IRS was part of a political oppression uh, of Obama's political enemies, but it's just like snow removal. Actually, I think that's the first time that they've ad admitted that Obamacare is a real snow job. But it's not just snow that they're shoveling, and they're shoveling it onto the working poor. Look at this story from Michael Snyder. Nine of the ten occupations in America pay an average wage of less than $35,000 a year. Folks, this is the engineered collapse of the middle class. What he does here is he's got the ten jobs, the ten job categories that employ the most number of people in the U.S. economy, and only one of those, nurses, made more than $35,000 a year.
Only one of these job categories, registered nurses, made more than $35,000 a year. Now, the sad thing about this is that Obamacare and the mandates that it puts on employers are causing the people that are in these types of typically service jobs to have their hours cut, many times their entire job cut. They're being cut back to part-time pay because so many businesses will not be able to afford the mandates. These, of course, are also going to be the types of service jobs that are going to be most vulnerable to being replaced by artificial intelligence and robotics. For example, people who are freight and material movers, truck drivers, for example, they are going to be replaced, for the most part, with self-driving cars and not that many years out. But right now, 59% of all American workers are bringing home less than $35,000 a year. Now, in more police state news, we see that even more people are claiming that they've been targeted for having Colorado license plates. We pointed out that one fellow in Idaho was targeted. That was a story that broke last week. Now we see that in Nevada, a motorist named Mark Jennings says he was stopped more than once by the state police. He was stopped three different times. And he said on one of these stops where it occurred to him this what was going on, he said there were either three or four other state troopers pulled up in other vehicles. And I was in the car watching these other vehicles pull up. At that point, I knew for sure it was probably them thinking that I was transporting drugs from Colorado into another state. That's exactly what these other drivers have pointed out, especially the guy in Idaho. They brought drug-sniffing dogs. This is the kind of profiling that we're concerned about. And of course, in California, we just had a report a couple of weeks ago that the police there said they wanted to get all license data, because, license data in a database because they considered everyone as suspects in a crime. What are you going to do when the government starts mining everybody's behavior trying to discover crimes? This is the danger of the surveillance state, and it's not going to stop there. Look at the way that they're suppressing information. The Ministry of Truth is cracking down on climate change skeptics. This is from The Times in the UK. Ben Webster writes, ministers who question the majority view among scientists about climate change should, quote, shut up and instead repeat the government line on the issue. According to members of parliament, the Commons Science and Technology Committee said that appearance on radio and television by climate skeptics should be accompanied by Health warnings, health warnings. The MPs said that the BBC should apply the same stringent requirements to interviewing climate change skeptics as it applies to interviewing politicians. For example, any proposal to invite politicians to contribute to non-political output must be referred to the chief advisor of politics. This is a sure sign that they are losing the argument. The data does not support global warming. It was supposed to be driven by an increase in CO2. We've seen record increases in CO2, and yet we have seen globally temperatures declining, even though they're moving a lot of collection of temperatures to places that are hot spots, places like cities, places like airports. They're losing the data. That's why they have to suppress the argument. Would they be trying to shut people up and censor them if people were going around saying that the earth was flat? No. But when they're telling the truth about what's going on and pointing to the data, they have to be shut up. Now, Turkey has been shutting down YouTube. They censored YouTube last week. And of course, before that, they shut down Twitter. But the American government is a bit more devious and subtle than that. Instead of shutting down social networks, they're manufacturing fake social networks like this Cuban Twitter account. Leanne McAdoo has that report. The U.S. government created a secret social media platform aimed at taking down Cuba's communist government. With the recent introduction of cell phone use in Cuba, U.S. officials saw the perfect opportunity to reach hundreds of thousands on the island. The plan was to launch a Cuban Twitter using cell phone text messaging to evade Cuba's strict control of information and internet regulation. Initially, users would receive non-controversial content like news messages on soccer games or music and hurricane updates. Later, when the network reached a critical mass of subscribers, operators would introduce political content aimed at inspiring Cubans to organize smart mobs, mass gatherings called at a moment's notice that might trigger a Cuban spring. This was incredibly dangerous for the some 40,000 young Cubans who were interacting with the platform. They had no idea that the messages they thought were uninfluenced by their government were in fact financed by the U.S. government and influenced by its agenda. 
Social media platforms like Twitter have aided uprisings in several countries, and in 2011, Hillary Clinton admitted the U.S. helped people in oppressive Internet environments get around filters. There's no telling how many of these uprisings have been financed and influenced by the U.S. government. But while the U.S. government admits that social media is a powerful tool in taking down regimes overseas, it wouldn't like to see technology having that same effect here in America. That's why every year we're seeing legislation like SOPA, CISPA, and PIPA, as well as the executive order signed by Obama that gives him the authority to shut down the Internet. Instruments to fight the enemy abroad are now being used as tools of tyranny here in America. Tanks used for war are now being brought to our streets. Urban warfare training has increased at home, and we are being openly propagandized to thanks to last year's reform of the Smith Month Act. The lifting of the propaganda ban will now allow a vast ocean of programming by Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and other media, which is now heard in over 100 countries, to be heard here at home as well. Talk radio is and was the original alternative media. When print was controlled, when the TV was controlled, only three channels, it was talk radio where people could call in and talk about things and so many stories would break regionally that would end up becoming you know, very important. And it was the place that could change what was happening legislatively. Government, tyrants in government have always feared talk radio. And they're doing everything they can to kill it now. And in response to a government losing the info war, NSA champion Mike Rogers will be coming to a radio station near you. Well, that's it for our news portion tonight. But right after the break, we're going to have the full report from Kit Daniels and Jakari Jackson about the Fort Hood shooting. They went to the press conference, of course, and they asked some very insightful questions. And Jakari Jackson has an interview where he talks to a graphic artist about how he's waking people up through art. That's right after the break. Stay tuned. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And Wake Up America Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high quality freedom based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. How much indication do you have about premeditation here? Was, was there anything tied to the timing of it? Was there something going on in this building? Uh, I do not know, and that'll be part of the investigation. I did not say his rank nor his name, and I'll do that when his family is appropriately notified. Sir, you said he came from another installation in February. Can you tell us which one that is? Um, at this time, uh, I prefer not. He was undergoing uh, behavioral health and psychiatric treatment uh, for depression uh, and anxiety. 
There are reports, uh, I don't know if he was diagnosed in the clinical sense, there are reports that he uh, self-reported uh, a uh, traumatic brain injury previously coming back from the Iraq. Was uh, he on any sort of medications? He was on medications, that's correct. Like SSRIs or antidepressants, anything of that nature? Yes. Was the uh, FBI already on the scene due to the uh, alert that they gave out about on Monday regarding a possible mass shooting? Uh, we have a uh, local FBI liaison officer, okay. uh, but no, large FBI you know, assets were not here. Okay. Um, uh, they are actually inbound to help with the investigation. All of the wounded and killed were military. General, the female officer who engaged him, how would you describe what she did today? So it's clearly heroic, uh, what she did. Uh, at that moment in time, and, and uh, she did her job, and she did exactly what we would expect of the United States Army military police. What are your thoughts on Colonel carrying concealed weapons? You're not allowed to carry concealed weapons. Do you think that should change? Um, no, I don't think soldiers should have concealed weapons on board. We have law enforcement agents. Uh, we're trained professionals, and I, and I don't endorse carrying. How long did it take weapons? for the law enforcement to reach the scene? Uh, it was within minutes. Within minutes. Uh, exact time, probably 10 to 15, maybe. So Max. you're saying that we should have concealed weapons, but it still takes 10 to 15 minutes for law enforcement to even reach the scene. What's your comments on that? I think the law enforcement acted very rapidly uh, and swiftly, uh, given the nature of the circumstances. I understand that, but there's still people yeah, that have died. I'm going to get in a debate uh, with you on carrying weapons on a military installation. I just asked for all your thoughts and prayers. Uh, for the fallen and for the wounded in this particular case. Thank you very much. General, I know an old colleague here. Excuse me, General. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there was a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood shooting, potential Fort Hood situation? Uh, there's, yeah, there's no, there's no link that we know of to that particular case that we know of. We're investigating everything, but there's no particular link. I am aware of that. FBI report, and there's no particular link to that that we know of. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. What's your place in the info war? It's not all about sitting on TV in a suit or being on the radio show. You can use your own gifts and talents to inspire people around the world. And that's what our artist friend today is doing, Pizarro. Thanks for joining us, Pizarro. Hi there. 
All right, so I'm looking at your art, and we'll talk about your artistic style in just one second. But it's my understanding that you're not an American citizen. So what's your interest in American politics? Well, I um, spent a large chunk of my lifetime in America, and I can tell this country is you know, not like any other country. It's just sad that it's not like what it used to be. So, um, you know, and it's just, you know, it's double sad that, you know, a lot of American people are not not realizing what is changing. You know, the country is just losing a lot of freedom and, you know, people are still asleep. So um, I just, you know, it's it just, just, just hard for me not to not to take a step and, you know, pay attention to what is going on. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, what I always try to tell people, whether it's people like yourself, activists, uh, other journalists I meet, is, you know, you don't have to be on TV in a suit or on the radio. You can have your own artistic style. We have guys on who do comedy bits, guys who do art like you do. Whatever your gift is or whatever your interests are, that's where you should attack on and try to wake people up. Now, Pizarro, let's talk about this artistic style. You know, we were looking at it here in the studio, and it's definitely Street Fighter-esque. You know, I was a big Street Fighter fan, as many of the guys were grew up playing the game and now they have, I don't know how many games now, but just tell us uh, your artistic style and what influences you have. Well, um, I was looking for a, a way to um, turn information into something that uh, younger generations of people that, you know, fans like you guys that can easily relate to. So, I mean, obviously I'm using um, a lot of um, video games uh, references such as, you know, Street Fighter, um, you know, there's a few um, Grand Theft Auto stuff in there, so I can use that just to sort of tap into um, audiences that who might not already, um, you know, aware of what is going on. So, um, you know, so using a little bit of comedy to just kind of like draw those people into, um, you know, from not like to not interested into um, politics into like, oh, oh wow, that. That's that's funny. Who's who's this guy? Oh, wow. I it's very know. it's very eye catching, you know, because just like we were talking about earlier, you take something that's familiar to people, albeit, you know, obviously Street Fighter, Grand Theft Auto, some other influences as well. And people see that. But they say, but hold on, that's not, you know, that's not Ryu or that's not Ken. That's President Obama. What's this about? And then they can go see that he has the finishing move of the Predator drone, and it makes sense <laughs> to him. You know, they, they can understand this. It's easily uh, relatable and it's very uh, palatable. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's good that, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, to people that already know what is going on, that's funny to them. But to those people who's like not realizing what is going on, oh, now I can, you know, be educated about it. Exactly. And you have many people, not just Alex, you have Putin, Obama, David Icke, I saw in there, Mitt Romney, uh, the guy, uh, what's, his, what's the lieutenant who was pepper spraying, Lieutenant John. You know, which, uh, right. yeah, I mean, and th then this guy has the, dismissed, right? yeah, he has the, the audacity to say that, you know, he's, he needs workers comp because people made fun of him on YouTube <laughs> for doing that. You got Coney, all kinds of things going on right there. So uh, let me ask you, are you a, are you a big gamer? Well, um, I used to be, I don't have as much time anymore. You yeah, know, who I'm, does? <laughs> I, grew, I grew up alone, so I, you know, I, I have to work a lot now, so. So is art uh, an occupation for you, or is it something that you do on the side? Uh, used to be, used to be. I mean, I grew up in, as an artist. I used to have uh, an art career, but um, I, I do art as, uh, as a hobby now. Great. Well, you know, hobby or not, you have great work that, you know, I can tell that you, you know, weren't a professional guy who did this for a living. Like, I was, I was thinking maybe this guy is one of the official Street Fighter artists because it's a great style. It looks great. Like I said, it's easily uh, relatable. People can understand it. So let's just talk a little bit about politics. Let's talk about uh, Bernanke. You know, people see this Grand Theft Auto uh, New World Order. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, the quantitative easing going on in this country? Uh, just keep printing. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do. They just keep printing the money, and that's why our currency is being devalued, you know, because people don't understand that you need to have something back in your money, such as gold. But if you keep printing money for gold or whatever backing that you don't have, then your currency is worth less and less and less. So, you know, I mean, what that's, that's, I mean, that's the whole thing about the, um, you know, your, your question was like, what made me interested about American politics? I mean, frankly, I don't think this is American issue anymore. This is like global issue now. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Right, because like you know, I mean, with with the uh, with the QE stuff from the Fed, the UN, the IMF, I, I I mean, this is a global issue from the globalists now, and you know, I mean, pe these people here play like they are gods now. 
Yeah, they think they are. Uh, they, they definitely think they are. They think they can do whatever they want, wherever they want, with uh, no repercussions. And like you said, it's a, a global issue, whether it's currency, whether it's the police state, whether it's GMOs in the food. And I know many of those things are incorporated into your art in some level and also a little bit of pop culture. I saw the, the Charlie Sheen and all that in there. So, you know, you draw people in and that's a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great. So what's next for you? Do you have any other uh, upcoming projects? Uh, well, um, I mean, apart from um, uh, DeviantArt stuff that I have. Um, Just any. Uh, what's, your, what's your art about? You, where else can we find it? Well, uh, well, I um, I can send you more stuff about it on the email. I, you know, I I'm I'm not prepared to tell you about that right now. Okay, Just, so you got some like, some things you want to keep on the on the back burner right now. On. Right, right. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's all right because you know we do that too. You know we got stuff we don't we don't want people to know about until it's done and it's ready. It's it's ready to ship <laughs> out. So right. I I definitely understand that. Definitely respect that. So mainly we can find your stuff at DeviantArt. Definitely. Maybe I got a uh, Jakari Jackson versus um, Cyborg Hitler going on. You, who knows? <laughs> well, you can put Jakari Jackson versus APD. That'd probably be more <laughs> more accurate. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we love your stuff. We love your style. And uh, you know, I want you to give an inspirational word, just because uh, you were inspired by real events, and you took something that you were familiar with, and you brought that to other people who can understand it. Give somebody an encouraging word, whether that thing is art, whether it's music, uh, poetry, whatever video editing give somebody an encouraging word so they can take their skills and what they have and educate other people well i think um everybody can do um something about it i mean um you know i mean it doesn't have to be a lot uh you know you can spend a little bit of time um each day just to put something onto it, it you know i mean it I don't know. I mean, it, I, when I do this stuff, I don't think about like it, it has to be something in return. It doesn't have to be like people has to like it. I'm just doing it because I'm passionate about it. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. So, um, you know, and it, you know, and the rest is, doesn't really matter. So, you know, as long as I um, get the message out, it, you know, it's, it's all good. So, um, you know, if, I mean, if you if you feel good about it, then it's, you know, it's, <laughs> if you if you like what you do, other people will like it too. Because when you're passionate about your stuff, as you obviously are, other people can see this. You know, I you know I just met you right now, talking to you via Skype. But I can look at this image, you know, of Alex and President Obama. I say, man, this guy takes his stuff seriously. He loves what he does, and he's passionate about his work. And you know, even if you do it just you know, initially for yourself, there are other people that can be encouraged. And they say, you know, what's up with this Alex Jones guy? What's up with David Icke? What's up with uh, Mitt Romney or whoever else there are? in these pictures and they can go and research these things for themselves and find out what's really going on in the world. Well, Pizarro, I, I definitely thank you for your time and now give us your finishing thoughts. Well, thank you for having me. All right, uh, Pizarro at DeviantArt.com. Thank you, sir. And if you'd like to see more artists, more anti-NWO artists, you can go to the InfoWars shop and pick up a copy of the InfoWars magazine. You can buy them in bulk, you can get them singles, whatever you need to do to spread this message of liberty. Each month we feature a different artist. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you again next time. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.